What's going on, dear viewers? Back by popular demand, I've returned to outline more examples of great execution on writing. Welcome to Kane Walker's Dread Quest in Review, starring Odin Sphere Leithrasir. Odin Sphere Leaf Thrasir is an enhanced remake of the original Odin Sphere, a western action role-playing game developed by Vanillaware and published by Atlas. Released in 2016, the game offers a rich, hand-drawn art style and a deep narrative. Inspired by Norse mythology, this story takes place in the fantastical world of Arian, a land teeming with magic, mythical creatures, and war. The narrative is divided into five interconnected storylines, each following a different protagonist with their own unique perspective, cataloging the events of an impending Armageddon. A Valkyrie and the daughter of the demon lord Odin, Gwendolyn grapples with her loyalty to her father, her own sense of justice and free will. A prince, cursed to be a rapid-like creature called Apuka, Cornelius, seeks to uncover the mystery behind his transformation and return to his beloved. The upstart fairy queen, who must defend her kingdom and come to terms with her newfound responsibilities, Mercedes, witnesses the death of her mother before an immediate revolt. A shadow knight, seeking redemption and a new purpose, Oswald, faces a vicious tug of war with the Queen of the Dead, struggling on the battlefield to win back his soul. The smoldering princess of Valentine and twin sister of Ingwe, Velvet, aims to stop the impending apocalypse while dealing with her family's tragic past and a premonition of tragedies to come. Remember when writing your own stories, that character agency is a key skill to absorb, especially from this piece of media. The world of Odin Sphere is one of cosmic wonder and mystery. From the swirling, starlit skies of Nebulopolis, all the way to the toxic and necrotic depths of the underworld, you will never be starved of stunning scenery, gorgeous enemy designs, and cozy slice of life interactions. It's the perfect inspiration for any fairy tale. Provide sensory details and create a vivid, immersive world that charms and even seduces your reader into a warm narrative embrace. Establishing the aura of the world and integrating elements that contribute to the atmosphere and tone. The game's plot unfolds through interconnected storylines, as mentioned prior, revealing answers piece by piece and escalating tension as each character's journey progresses. The threat of war and apocalypse is a dark, looming cloud that keeps players invested in the narrative. With multiple endings and challenging battles, you'll be leaning forth in your seat quite a lot in the later stages of this tale. Controlling the pace in this way is a hook within the consciousness of your audience that builds tension, escalates conflict, and stokes mystery, balancing action with quieter moments to allow for character development and proper player digestion. Odin Sphere incorporates themes of love, sacrifice, and fate. The game explores these themes in spades through the lens of prophecy, personal vendetta, and kindred commonality. The overarching plot is a tragic backdrop of revelation as our heroes experience the pain of loss, betrayal, and the woes of a war-torn homeland that stand in gut-wrenching contrast to the beauty and opulence of the world. In your story, identify and explore themes that resonate with it. Weaving meaningful themes into your narrative adds lasting connections to your writing.
You know, it's as if this game was written by playwrights. It's been advertised as a storybook presentation before, but features very poetic and gripping dialogue that at times is sure to strum the heartstrings. Not a single line feels unnecessary, and frankly, this is a masterclass in the art. By crafting authentic and purposeful dialogue, the writer serves both character development and plot progression in a satisfying way. Use dialogue to reveal information, build relationships, and showcase personalities. Okay, uh, this is a difficult one for me, because this game left me with such a cathartic rush by the end that I couldn't imagine where you'd have a problem with any of these. But, we'll go through what I found. Some people think the game has a repetitive story structure and requires replay of similar scenarios from each character's perspective. And while this provides a comprehensive view of the story, it can feel tedious, particularly because the same locations and enemies are visited multiple times. The only thing I'll say here is that I disagree because there's a lot of good reasons why certain stories, especially stories that deal with cycles, seem repetitive and it's for a very constructive reason. It's the story of one nation and steps must be traced because some characters pick up where others leave off but I guess that could be an issue for someone as I've outlined in prior reviews things like this are very subjective but a good point is raised here if you have to revisit areas in your work make sure it actually serves the story otherwise it does seem pointless unless there's a goal behind it but as long as you do that I can't foresee most people being dissatisfied with revisiting anything some people claim that the dialogue is heavy with the exposition, where characters spend a lot of time explaining backstory or plot points rather than showing them through actions or interactions. While I think this is a huge misread for this story, because a lot of info is revealed in cutscenes that lead to gameplay and characters talk back and forth about the events of the game and things that are meant to happen, after very important aggressive conflicts take place, there's still a solid point buried beneath this. because. Striking the proper balance between exposition and action is crucial to storytelling structure because when you have a proper balance, it never feels like the story is being ground to a halt and it never feels like so many things are going by rapidly to the point where you can't even think about what has happened. So keep that in mind. The next problem people have is pacing issues and they say the pacing can sometimes be inconsistent with long stretches of narrative or combat that may disrupt flow of the story. Can lead to moments where the momentum slows down too much. Eh, I mean, it's a video game, so if there's long stretches of gameplay, I doubt any gamers would be upset with that, but, you know, even with somewhat inaccurate criticism, like I said, there's always some good points buried in there, so be sure to maintain consistent pacing and break that up with entertaining bits of action, dialogue, narrative exposition, you know the drill. Distribute that evenly and ensure all of that serves the plot in some way. This next issue I can kind of get because with this style of story it's bound to happen they say some plot twists and character arcs may seem predictable or cliched which they may be mistaking a trope for a cliche but there are some things that happen that the game doesn't really hide are going to happen I get it it might not be your thing following familiar tropes of the genre without offering significant surprises or innovations sometimes that's not really necessary which is something that I tell people a lot don't try to reinvent the wheel here's what I'll say if you can and find a creative way to introduce a new perspective on an established trope. Do that. But doing what people refer to as subverting expectations just to subvert expectations is pointless. And it really comes off as contrarian and even a bit pretentious. And being obsessed with subverting expectations can really hurt your story. So just be careful with that. If you've watched my playthrough of this game, it's no secret that I really like it. Everything from the presentation to the music, the atmosphere, it's all wins for me. The gameplay is fun and challenging on higher difficulties. Play this on hard, and the payoffs in the story were worth it for me. I rate Odin Sphere, Leaf Thrasir, and Ironclad. 9 out of 10 and the point that's been deducted from the score is because on higher difficulties which i just told you to play on it's way more fun 
combat lasts just a little too long in certain places because of the amount of health enemies have and your inability to launch them. And I get that games want to be challenging, but whenever I can't go into an area that's rated for the level I am and do well, it's kind of annoying because it's almost a requirement to be over leveled to have any facet of success. And it's very confusing. You know, I'm level 45, going to a level 45 area and I get washed by everything, everything. I don't do regular, I get obliterated. So that's really my only problem with it. The scaling seems a bit wonky. Over-reliance on potions like World Women Toxin, they are extremely overpowered. Use them, they're really good. <laughs> Needless to say, you should get this game, but unfortunately it's not on PC and I have no idea when they plan on doing that. But anyway, I've rambled long enough. That does it for the review. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, and check out the links in the description to keep your fingers on the pulse of Cosmogod. This is your gracious host, Kane Walker, signing off, and I will see you all again next time. Peace.